I like to talk a little bit to my guests about, you know, their background and other things. Um, you know, just as an introduction and to sort of advertise the podcast a little bit. And so I wanted to start by asking you a few random questions. Uh, one of those is, well, what is your background? So the first time I met you, it was in a lab in the basement uh, in, in San Jose. So um, then uh, I noticed your retrocausality work. And then the last time I saw you it was at a virtual conference at the Perimeter Institute. Of course, I was here. You were in San Jose because it was virtual, but still. Um, so it, and that was on the nature of time, I think. So it, there's a lot going on just right Yes, there. I took a left turn in my career. I was a experimental physicist uh, doing work with lasers, um, very, very powerful lasers out at Livermore Labs, and then very, very small lasers in the basement uh, uh, San Jose State. And I guess going on in the background all this time, though, I mean, why do people get into physics? They want to understand things, right? They want to understand, you know, why is this the way it is? And uh, going through uh, my education, it started to become clear that nobody really knew why quantum theory was the way it was. It just, it worked. Um, there wasn't a real reason for it. And um, I was like, oh, I would like to figure that out someday. And I think like a lot of people, they thought, well, I just got to sit down for a few hours and and it'll all it'll all be obvious and sort itself out. Well, it it doesn't work out uh, that easily for sure. So uh, I guess the main impetus for me kind of switching over to foundations was kind of threefold. One is I just started to get some some ideas that hadn't been explored in the literature that I saw about uh, two time boundary conditions, and well, nobody else is doing this. Um, and the second thing that happened was my laser blew up. Uh, and the third thing that happened was that I got tenure and I suddenly had uh, my academic freedom that I did not want it to go to waste. So the whole idea of tenure is, or one of the ideas of tenure is that uh, you got to set academics free to, to study what they want to study without fear of, of political consequences. And um, certainly retrocausal accounts of quantum theory uh, are even today, even though you express some sympathy, uh, they're, it's pretty far out there. And so having tenure is nice uh, job security. Just out of curiosity, how much did that laser cost? <laughs> it was my entire, my entire startup package of $40,000. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I made much more expensive mistakes at Lawrence Livermore, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So I guess I've got two, well, I've got a couple of questions that come out off, off of that. But the first one is, is, you know, I've seen a, it looks like there's a real pathway with quantum optics to quantum foundations, right? Because well, and actually, the I guess the question is: Is do you think there's a reason why quantum op, so many people that are in quantum optics can move to quantum foundations? Well, I guess the the mysteries seem more evident with with optics than with particles. Um, with I mean, even for me as a laser experimentalist, I would be sitting there with my detector, looking at an X-ray show up on a CCD, on a single pixel of a CCD camera, you know, meters away from my uh, laser interaction. And, you know, thinking of that little pixel lighting up as an electromagnetic wave that had spread out from meters away and suddenly all showed up on this little pixel is, is kind of mind bending really, right? And having things that you know are waves, especially in optics, right? You know they're waves show up like particles is just like poking your nose in, in the big mystery that we still don't understand. Um, so maybe that's it. Maybe it's just, it's not so weird when an electron flies out and hits a spot, but when electromagnetic wave shows up in a spot, that's weird. Okay. I guess the other thing there was, were there any particular difficulties 
when you moved from experimental work to trying to do quantum foundations, more theoretical work, were there, what did you have to retrain yourself to do? Yeah, there were many difficulties. I did not have, I had not been reading up on the literature. I, there was so much background that uh, I needed to learn just took years and years and years of going to conferences and finding out, oh, that's how that approach works. And that's how that approach works. And that's the problem with that approach. And that's the problem with that approach. And um, there's just, the quantum foundations is a really big and wide field in part because it was marginalized for so many years. So, so many people were working sort of on their own in little, in little subgroups. Uh, you would get these quantum foundations conferences that you would think, oh, all these people in quantum foundations are going to come together and, and work things out. But it was really more like a circular firing squad where everyone else knew the problems with everyone else's approaches. Um, and so uh, I think it's gotten better than it was uh, 15 years ago when I, or almost 20 years ago now when I started switching over. But um, it's still, uh, it's still a weird field. I mean, I know people at, you know, major research institutions who love foundations and feel like they can't talk to their colleagues about it because that would, that would be bad for them politically, um, which is, which is sad, right? No, that, that's quite sad. I, especially, I mean, if you're in one of these places where there are 40, 50 physics professors running around, I mean, you'd think that would be a great place to, you know, throw ideas off of other people, right? That's right. That's right. Um, I'm just just saying that we don't understand quantum theory is not something you hear a lot. Yeah, that is true. I tell, I promise you, nobody understands what's going on down there. Excellent, excellent. Um, another thing is, is what I wanted to ask is, you know, do you have any do you have any feeling about how you get your ideas? Right. This is another thing people like to talk um, about. I mean, usually by ruling out another one of my ideas. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it is, uh, I wonder if this will work. And no, that didn't work. But oh, there was this really interesting piece of it. And let's spin off in that direction. So um, a lot of it really is, uh, it's not quite like it was as an experimentalist, seeing, seeing what actually happened. But uh, there's some experimental sense to it in that oh, you know, I wonder if this model of the electron spin is going to give me what I want here. And no, no, it didn't work. Um, and uh, so uh, probably my best ideas have come from failure, I would say, yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Good to have an open mind and just, you know, it, I guess if you can, if you can refute yourself, it's a lot less embarrassing than- um, Well, sure, can... no one uh, is going to spend the time and effort to uh, find the flaw in uh, in someone else's ideas as much as, as what you should of your own ideas, and uh, I just wish I could fail faster. Sometimes I could get on get on to the the okay. right idea. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. I guess the last thing I might want to ask is: Are there anything? Is there anything? Um, so, at least in America, the colleges and universities they're extremely diverse in the way things are done right you can go from places like you know st john's where they just read classics right you can go to places like i don't know um colorado college right where they have this sort of block system where you take one class for three and a half weeks and then you take the next class for three and a half weeks uh, is there anything interesting or i shouldn't say interesting is, is there anything about san jose state that is unique that um people might be interested in hearing about. Yeah, so I mean, from my perspective as somebody in in foundations, it's sort of perfect in that uh, it's not all teaching, all, all my time is not taken up by teaching, um, but it's not all research either, which I think makes it hard to be in quantum foundations. Uh, it's, a, it's a great blend, I love teaching, and so I get to do some teaching and I get to do some research, and being sort of in that that middle uh, sector sort of gives me the freedom. You know, if I'm publishing a, a paper or two a year, uh, that's great. You know, um, it's not like 
I uh, need to, in fact, at San Jose State, it's the way the Cal State system works uh, in California, there's the UC system, everyone, you know, has heard of UC Berkeley, UCLA, all that. And then there's the Cal State system, they're different systems and it's set up in the charter that no PhDs at the Cal State system. So I get master's graduate students and I get undergrads, but no, no PhD students. Um, and that's a very different sort of environment in that uh, it's not like, oh, I got to have my research lab and mint out a certain number of PhDs every year. Um, it's, it's much more, oh, you're interested in this? Let's work on that together for an, a semester and see how it goes. Well, it's great if you can find people who are interested in um, working with you. It's just so it's just so much more fun. Um, it, it's one of the most fun things that you can actually have if somebody's really interested and you know wants to come by and meet once or twice a week just to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm I love talking. About, it's my favorite thing to talk about. So anyone's watching this wants to shoot me an email and talk about it. Let's let's talk. Excellent. Well, I think those are all the questions I have. So I want to thank you once again, uh, once for you know allowing me to ask all these impertinent questions. And secondly, for the great podcast that we just taped before this that I think hope everybody actually um, listens to. So, uh, you know, just thank you very much for this hour and a half or hour and 15 minutes of your time. And um, I hope it was enjoyable for you as it was for me. It was very enjoyable. Thanks, Jim, for, for doing this. It's a great service uh, to the wider community. And uh, I hope uh, you get some in, uh, interested uh, viewers. You don't have to worry about that. You're, you, you did make the wrong, you did say the wrong thing. You did say, you know, just shoot me an email. And um, <laughs> okay, I, good. I, I know there are only 7,000 people who are going to listen to the podcast, but you'll probably get about 700 emails. So. Okay, I'll, I'll start limbering up my uh, typing fingers. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you once again. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers.